Good morning, folks. We've got a number of stories to hit today from beneath our feet, out into deep space, peering into the past with an eye on the future. Let's begin at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on the sun was a continued march towards a more full Earth-facing half. Between active regions and the southern coronal hole, we've got much more than those filaments to see today. The most active region we'll be watching is on the south near the incoming limb. Three umbral cores to the group, and it would be the most likely to flare of the bunch on the Earth-facing half right now. Let's peek at the solar wind. The phi angle flip three days ago was preceding a coronal hole stream which impacted yesterday and is causing sustained low-level geomagnetic storms into the morning hours here. Up next, I want to show you a comparison between 2020 on the left and 2021 on the right. It can take up to two years for a sunspot cycle to really kick in, and this is our year-over-year -year comparison here. Folks, let's talk about that Caribbean volcano because it's the first modest stratospheric injection we've had. Despite what seems like so many volcanoes going off, this isn't all that unusual, and we hadn't had a serious stratospheric injection from any in a while. This one isn't what I'd call serious, but it is a clear mark on the upper atmosphere. Now for some perspective. When you look at the volcano-driven cooling from sunlight reflection, this is what you get during the period of climate science. Problem is, this doesn't tell you what volcanoes do on the planet. That chart I showed before, that's in the green brackets over on the right. Look what our planet really does over time. We are at record low volcanic cooling for hundreds of years, really need to go back a thousand years to find the last volcanic drought like the one we're having now, and when it ends, yikes. And since we spent time last week on the new ways they want to help predict volcanoes through viscosity and heat signature remote sensing, here's one on what we can't detect before it goes boom. In this realm, by the way, as the Muppet in Chief prepares to blindly make climate moves, he's got more than the political opposition mentioned in the subtitle. There's a serious reality problem going on. It's not just the preposterous volcano data timeline, but the slew of problems they have from A to Z in climate science. This is going to be a key topic over the coming years, and I highly recommend the climate playlist on our channel homepage for more information. Up next, boom, shatter, blaze. New ESA video on space debris and capture ideas. It is a lot of those netting procedures and still no use of magnets to catch and capture the pieces. Promise that is a good idea. Anyway, link is below to this video. Now we're going to transition here with what essentially amounts to taking 50 years of science and throwing it out the window. Quantum spin liquids are a fantasy. This would be funny if it weren't so astonishing how much time, money, and mind power were dedicated to this over the last century. An interesting one up next showing that the gas feeding growing stars is a bigger factor in their eventual character than their initial mass. This is a relatively mundane piece of news until you remember that once again their presumptions have to go out the window when they observe the real universe, and it speaks to their version of the timeline and evolution of the universe. It doesn't have anything nice to say, by the way, but they keep letting it talk. Want to express my excitement for the SHIELDS mission? First chance to launch is in two days, and it will hopefully discover some key information about the region just outside the solar system, where our sun's magnetic field crashes into the galaxies. Sidestepping to Venus orbital dust ring visualized by the Parker probe, and for veteran observers, this makes me wonder how much dust needs to arrive with a galactic current sheet if we merely get a dust reorganization in the solar system. Maybe it's not going to take nearly as much as we've been thinking for a solar instigation, and that's not exactly a sunshine and rainbows sort of thought there. Lastly, we're coming home for two of the last four disaster events. First one studies the megafauna die-off in Australia during the Lachamp geomagnetic excursion. It was not at all obvious from size alone who was going to make it in that one, and it's another nod to the disaster of these excursions. Now we're going to skip over Mono Lake and Lake Mongo to the Gothenburg excursion and Younger Dryas event, the very last disaster about 12,000 years ago. And they are showing, similarly, how not all large predators disappeared. Sometimes you get lucky, and you adapt. Literally, you, since all these confirmations of how dangerous these events really are isn't making our current entry into the next one any less concerning. We greatly appreciate your support. See those playlists on our channel page for more on climate, the catastrophe about to unfold, and more. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow.
right here, but right now it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.